were here as people have been for many, many years, including the year when Irish CND planted this cherry tree in memory of the victims of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, where atom bombs were used consciously, deliberately as a weapon of war. That's one of the things that led Ireland not only to embrace membership of the UN, but to be stalwarts and pioneers for nuclear disarmament within the UN, particularly led by Frank Aiken. And that's a legacy which is too much honoured verbally and increasingly diminished and dishonoured by the erosion of what Frank Aiken saw as the absolute crux of our foreign policy, Article 29, negotiation, international law, working with our so-called enemies to try to understand what the problem may be. And the erosion of that legacy, which has been taking place and against which that would take an enormous, a disastrous step if we were to say, now we're removing UN authority from Irish foreign policy. Of course the UN has problems, problems due to the neglect of the UN and the, as it were, dalliance with NATO and nuclear alliance. And what we need is to reform the UN, not to abandon it by dismantling the triple lock. We hope that one day all nuclear weapon states will no longer be nuclear weapon states. And to all the nuclear weapon states, whether represented here today or not, our message is the same as it is every year. We deplore your weapons of mass destruction. We deplore the vast sums of money that you spend in maintaining and developing and renewing those weapons and their weapon systems. We deplore the mindset of barbarism that considers it acceptable to threaten the use of weapons of indiscriminate destruction against humankind and against the global environment. The suffering and destruction wreaked upon Hiroshima 79 years ago are testimony to the fact that such weapons should not exist, should never have existed and must cease to exist. We also remember today the human cost on the millions of people who have suffered all over this planet because of the cost of the arms race, the billions of euro and dollars spent on development and on production. The people of the world have paid the ultimate price with hunger, poverty, homelessness, unemployment and of course environmental degradation. While the big powers, on the other hand, have endless funding for militarism and the development of weapons such as nuclear weapons. While, on the other hand, slashing the budgets for building schools, hospitals, healthcare, housing and creating employment. It's very interesting not only that we have this wonderful cherry tree which has now grown so much but that it was planted in 1980 by Irish CND. It's very interesting that it was planted in Merrion Square where we're able to look out at government buildings and Leinster House and it brings home to us the triangular nature of the triple lock. That the triple lock if we're ever going to send any of our soldiers abroad, that it has to be authorised, obviously by the government. That has to be approved by Doyle Aaron. But in the first place, it must be on an exercise, a mission, an operation, which is guided by genuine UN authority. And that's what the government are now talking about dismantling. They're taking the central, the primary lever out of the triple lock, which means effectively that the UN is once more being displaced by the people who shed crocodile tears over its alleged failure, the leading powers in NATO, and of course the other members of the nuclear club with whom the United States and Britain seem to be quite happy to dice with death. And it's heartbreaking to see official Ireland going or threatening to go one more step 
in its dismantling of the foreign policy behind our genuine achievements on nuclear disarmament and towards what they've almost already embraced, effective membership of a first strike nuclear-based alliance. So that's why being here is so important and it's also poignant in a way that we can just see over there the tip of the Dún Chivniochoin, the fort, the monument to the Irish soldiers and other members of the Defence Forces who have ever lost their lives, largely in UN missions. And that's something where we need to make the connection and keep the connection.